So my friends and I, we like to go longboarding, and there's this spot up in Rockland that we go to a lot, and it's on Park Drive, and one side of the hill that the road is on, it has some fairly nice slopes that are easy to go down to, some beginner slopes, and that's usually the kind of stuff that we board on, but then on the other side, there's literally like a sheer drop off of road. And if you were to try to go down it, you'd just be, it would be a death sentence to say the least. So one day when we were boarding up there, um, we were checking out the other side, the back side of the hill, and it's insanity. And we just were going down it. We started going down it, and we'd just get off and we'd slow ourselves down and get off and stop when we were gaining too much speed and we knew we wouldn't be able to control ourselves. So, yeah, then once we got down about halfway, one of my friends was like, I think I can make the rest. I think I can do it. And mind you, uh, he wasn't wearing a helmet. So it was a horrible idea just to begin with. So he goes for it. He just straight tries to bomb the rest of it. And it seemed fairly logical at first because it didn't seem like there is that much hill left. But, uh, yeah, so he just goes for it, and he... Like right away, right when he started going, we could just tell that he was going to gain way too much speed by before the end of the slope. So he gets down and he's almost towards the end and his board starts getting speed wobble, which is when you don't carve correctly when longboarding and your board wobbles back and forth uncontrollably until you basically fly off. So his he starts getting speed wobble and then he just gets tossed from his board like a rag doll, going about like 40, 45 miles an hour down a hill, not wearing a helmet, and he just tumbles, tumbles over himself three or four times. And yeah, and that's on concrete too. So we get down there and we're just freaking out because we have no idea what to expect. We thought he could be anywhere from I don't even know. We thought he might have died, honestly. Like, it was that insane. So we got down there, and then he, s he sat up, and we ha all had, like, a sigh of relief. But he was bleeding, which was... He was bleeding pretty bad from a lot of spots on his back and his head, and especially a spot in the back of his head. And so, yeah, we were checking him out, and we are asking him if he was okay and stuff, and he was so out of it. So out of it. So right away... Since I've had two concussions before, I knew that he had gotten a concussion just from like the way he was acting. Because when you get a concussion, you lose your short-term memory and stuff. And he kept repeating questions and didn't know what was going on, didn't know what had happened. He was out of it, straight out of it. So I was freaking out. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know whether I should call 911 and um, have him be driven off to the hospital and then um, having to pay like the bill and all that stuff for a hospital or whether he would be okay and I should just go get my car and I drive him home and he'd eventually snap out of it so I didn't know what to do I so first thing that I did is I just ran back and got my car while everyone else was down there watching after him I just sprinted right back up that hill and that was the longest that felt honestly like the longest run that I've ever done in my whole entire life. Because that hill is steep, and it's long. And I had to sprint up there, and it was like a race against time. The whole way up there, I was just thinking, I was just thinking to myself, I'm like, what if I don't run fast enough, and then it's my fault that he's gone? Like, what if I barely miss getting down there in time? to drive him off somewhere to be saved. Like, what if that happened? I, would, I, don't, I wouldn't even know what to do with myself. So I finally get to the top, get my car, speed down the hill, and then we stop down there. And he's come to his senses a little bit more now. And we've cleaned up some of the blood. And we can kind of tell like what's going on and like where he's bleeding from and how bad. And at this point, we just, pile him in the car and um, drive off and we're planning on going home 
and he's just still bugging out. Like he's asking questions over and over again, repeating himself, and he doesn't even know. He has short-term memory loss, and because of being hit on the back of the head and by landing on the back of his head on concrete. So he keeps asking, like he got a new phone a couple days prior to that happening, and he was like, whose phone is this? Like he didn't even know his own phone phone from a couple days ago and yeah he kept asking what time it was and he kept saying guys we like yeah it's like my mom's gonna fucking kill me like yeah dude she probably will <laughs> so then we were driving home and of course uh, I'm about to run out of gas on the way home so I have to stop at a gas station and he's in the back and he's like kind of mumbling to himself um, and a repeating questions and stuff like that that he's already asked a thousand times. And then he asked my friend, he's like, dude, does Cameron's car have heat? He's like, yeah. He's like, turn that on. So then he turned on the heat in my car and it started like filling up the car with heat. I guess it was cold or something or he was cold. I don't even know. So. And then about a minute after that, he's like, dude, it's fucking hot in here. Because <laughs> he completely forgot that he had asked for the heat to be turned on. So that was just another hilarious thing that happened. And then when we finally got home, he, we bandaged him up. He started coming back to his senses more. My dad helped take care of him because he's... Um, he has his nursing degree and stuff, so he was able to patch him up and stuff, and he turned out to be all right. So there's that, and that's my story.